sex talk. Derek the Miley. Cause sexuality is tough. And okay, sex just isn't good enough. No. Sex talk with Derek and Miley. Hello, folks, and welcome to Sex Talk with Erica Miley. I have a wonderful guest, and I'm going to gush just for a second because <laughs> Billy Presida, I am just a huge fan of yours, period, <laughs> and the Man Horn podcast, which I know you're going to talk about here in a second, and I am so stoked to talk with you today. So tell my folks who you are and what you do. Uh, hey, I am uh, Billy Presida. I'm a stand-up comedian in New York City, and I do this show, uh, a silly little show called the uh, Man Whore Podcast, where I talk. To, I typically talk to women I've hooked up with about sex, dating, and why we didn't work out. Which is amazing. One of the things we were talking about just a second ago is something that Billy does on this show is that he is incredibly sex positive and focuses on consent a lot, which I think is amazing. So like when you started this podcast, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> uh, I was going to thoroughly embarrass myself to strangers. Uh, <laughs> I was worried uh, no one would listen. A bunch of comedians were going to make fun of me at roast battles, you know, which was probably going to happen anyway, I'm sure. Yeah, but I gave him something new, you know, before, <laughs> I think before I did the show, like any roast battle stuff about me would have been like low key sex party stuff. And now mm -hmm. it's like, when you make your job about where your dick's been, it's just a whole <laughs> new, you know, breath of material to make fun of me for. But, you know, at least it, it paid off. If that, that was the thing, it's like if I did this show and then like some people said like, oh, that's that sounds super embarrassing. Like I wouldn't want a lot of people to hear it. I said, no, a lot of people have to hear it for it to be worth saying it, period. I, I completely agree with you. <laughs> like if I did this show and only had 12 listeners, I fucking I don't know what. Uh, that would be really embarrassing. <laughs> the thing that I think is super unique about your show is that you take your experience and the experiences of your partners and the people around you and you make them known. You take the shame out of it. You say, hey, yeah, this might be embarrassing and I'm going to turn red and I'm going to blush, but it's out here. It's out here. Let's put it in the light. Yeah, that, that makes it sound a lot loftier than I intend. I like that. That's way better. <laughs> So the biggest reason why I wanted to have you on my show was that your most recent podcast episode, Watching You Fuck at Desire Resorts, is, it's funny, at the end of the episode, you said, where's my Peabody? And I was just like, yeah, I agree. Where's your Peabody for this? Because <laughs> it is like ESPN After Dark. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you want me to uh, explain what we did? Yes, please. From beginning to end. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, I went to this, pla uh, this, this place called Desire Resorts, uh, contacted me and was like, hey, we, we want to fly you down. And I was like, dope. Uh, I can't afford vacations. <laughs> so they were like, yeah, they flew me and a plus one down. And I took a partner of mine and we went down to Mexico. And it's this clothing optional couples only resort. It's lifestyle friendly. Marketing gave me a list of words I'm allowed to use and a list of words I'm not allowed to use. Fair. But it's it's a resort where there's a lot of people in the lifestyle, but also a lot of monogamous couples looking to try something sexy and different, nudist couples, stuff like that. And we did an episode where I found a couple to fuck in my suite. And then me and my partner and then our neighbors, we sat outside the sliding glass doors watching them fuck with microphones and did commentary. It was just absolutely incredible. I think when somebody who's listening to this, I would imagine this sounds like to them like some bros doing this, but it is not that at all. Like I kind of want to allay anyone's fears of this, that you talk very respectfully and wonderfully about what you're watching. And yeah, anything I do seems to have to come with a lot of caveats in, in that it's not like a bro thing. That's kind of frustrating, but I also have the face that I have. So mm. I get it. So one of the things that I heard you saying throughout the episode, and I think if you're not on Billy's Instagram, jump on Billy's Instagram because he does lots of fun stuff there. <laughs> I think one of the things that I appreciate about you the most is that you are constantly going back to consent. And that was one of the big things you talked about in this episode. Yeah, totally. I definitely did that. If you say so. 
And when I put these episodes out, so I mean, I think like after a couple of days after it goes out, like whatever I talked about is just out of my head. Totally Dude. forget. Is I'm just, man, this was a. Uh, Done 232 of these things, plus like another 100 or so bonus episodes. So, like, I can't keep track anymore. But yeah, I probably talked about consent at some point. It's a kind of fun topic. You had mentioned that, like, when someone was thinking about booking at Desire, that you're like, that it would be a fun couples retreat for you and whoever you want to take with you. And it's probably something you want to get, you want to check out with them first. (laughs) I mean, look, it's a fun surprise. Like, it's a funny prank. Yeah. Like at bare minimum, like if you brought someone to Desire who didn't know like it was a clothing optional place, you know, that's that's a funny gag. I, you know, there's there's a couple who I interviewed and that's exactly what happened. It's kind of funny. It's a risky prank because that could cause you to need to go see a, a couple's counselor afterwards if she gets pissed enough. But it's definitely <laughs> something that I would advise you clear with the person beforehand so you have less hiccups. But there was a couple who like they the husband booked the vacation but he didn't tell her what it was. He's like, no, just pack really, really light. <laughs> <laughs> like how light? Like, you know, we just need cover up for the restaurant. No, he didn't say that. But uh, I thought that was a, a funny gag. Yeah, no, I think it's always good to like clear stuff with people. I think it makes things, I think it makes sex less awkward than sex already is. Yeah. It's like, you know, why, why make things less awkward by trying to talk someone into something they don't want to do? You know, I don't know. You ever have like a guy try to sell you a car you don't want? Mm -hmm. Imagine now you're naked and trying to maintain an erection. Like that doesn't seem pleasant to me. Right. When you are able to make your intentions clear, you are offering trust on the table. You're putting trust on the table. You're you're making somebody feel like they weren't coerced. And I think that all, all on its own can be sexy. Yeah. You know, not raping is pretty hot. (laughs) <laughs> it's absolutely true I mean, I mean especially i think i'm gonna do an entire episode about this especially in the climate that we have today i mean we're actually watching people on tv say terrible things about somebody who was sexually assaulted <laughs> in confirmation hearings for somebody who's going to be on the supreme court so the more we can in common language every day ask for permission and make it sexy and not so scary, the better. Yeah, I agree. So the other thing is a lot of my listeners, I think you and I were talking about this earlier, is that there are many people who don't understand the lifestyle. They don't understand poly or they don't understand non-monogamy or they're brand new to it and they don't know how to find their people. If you had resources or if you had like books or even blogs whatever the case may be, what would you suggest to somebody who's trying to connect with the community? I'm in a different position, maybe call it a comedian privilege where, Mm. you know, I don't have to worry about my job because talking about this stuff is my job. Right. And it's, it's kind of been that way since almost my entire adult life because I've been uh, doing stand-up comedy for an embarrassingly long time. So I can share stuff on the internet and it's fine. I can put myself out there. So I would tell someone like, oh, you're trying to find more like kinky sex party, poly people, whatever your thing that you're looking for is, just put it out into the universe. Mm. But then there's a lot of people who go, but I don't want people to find me on X, Y, or Z site or app or at this meetup. What if I know someone there? Some people were like, what if I run into someone at Desire, right? right. Uh, and they find out we're at this like sexy resort place. But you have to take some risk if you want to get what you want. And also, yeah. whatever risk you're taking, there's a good chance it's not as big of a risk as you think. Yes, I know a lot of people think they are in conservative parts of the country. Yes, I know people think that their job is really sensitive. For most people, it's not. But we take extra caution because it's like, it's my job. It's my social standing. So obviously, we're more cautious with it. But, you know, I don't know, if you're a construction site manager, I think there's a lot less risk of losing your job for going to an orgy than if Mm -hmm. you are a preschool teacher in Kentucky. But you just have to put yourself out there. So you put yourself on the app. And I'll say this, if you decide to go to a place like Desire, which I recommend you go to manwhorepod.com slash Desire if you want to book. But if you're going to go to a place like Desire or put out an ad on Reddit or you're going to put out a, a, a couple's profile on FetLife or Field. It's like, 
if someone finds you there, they were there too. That's right. So it's like, you have to remember, it's like, oh, then, so there was actually a couple we met at the resort who they've been going for years and years. And this trip, they ran into a couple. They live in the same small town in a big old conservative state. And they just both mm. happen to be like, oh, hi, you're here. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're both in a mutually destructive situation. If either of you rats on the other, the other one's going to rat too. So then mm. you're both facing the same consequence. Right. So you got to take the risk and put yourself out there. Otherwise, no one's going to know. If you're, if you're out there talking about polyamory and talking about being polyamorous, guess what? The people who are secretly poly around you are probably going to secretly come out to you because they're like, Jesus, well, Jim, you know, he's, he's been talking about being poly and he's still got his job or he talks about being poly and he seems not ashamed. Maybe I can tell him I am too. And then you start forming a community in whatever area you're in. But none of this happens if you don't put yourself out there. Exactly. You're putting out into the universe what you want to get back. And then that's a very difficult thing when there is that acceptance of your own identity that has to come. So if that is something you're struggling with, come see someone like me, you know, <laughs> or if if not me, then I will connect you with somebody that can to help you do that work. Because that is what Billy's saying is really important. If you're going to live the life you're meant to live, if you're going to enjoy pleasure, if you're going to enjoy sex, and get to enjoy the relationships you want to enjoy, you have to come to terms with who you are and how you operate on the inside. Yeah. And once you do that, you have to be willing to take the risk of like telling other people because it's like when you put like a little slut beacon into the air, people will know to come to you. Like I get so many questions from like people or comedians like about polyamory or about sex parties. And they're like, but what if this, or if I, if I'm into a trans woman, does that make me gay? Like that I get those questions because I talk about them publicly. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, well, I can ask Billy because it's a safe person too. Yes. You can become that person in your area, but somebody's got to if you're going to start a community. That's right. And know that it's okay. You may fail some and you may succeed some. And that's okay. All of it. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the things you've done recently? Some of the shows you've got coming up? Anything in particular? Well, I have a live show in Los Angeles coming up. I'm pretty excited for on November 4th. I'm going to be on stage with three or four of my exes because I hate myself. <laughs> I did a live show about a month and a half ago. So that's already up on the feed where I was on stage with three exes. So that was an interesting experience because it's in front of a live audience and oh, yeah. they, you know, kind of team up against me. Mm. That just works out that way. So we're going to do it again in Los Angeles. So that's on November 4th. And there are tickets available for that at manwhorepod.com slash tickets. This also probably happened by the time this comes out, but I'm going to be at the Brooklyn Sex Expo this weekend. So in terms of the podcast, that's what I've got planned. I got ideas that I want to do that I just haven't really um, started planning out yet. I've been busy, but <laughs> like I want to do one where like me and someone else are sitting at a big table mm -hmm. talking, but underneath the table, there's a person for each of us to, to go down on us, but they only play with our genitals when we're speaking. So like if you and I were speaking, like I, they're only, the person below the desk is only going to blow me while I'm talking. And then if I stop talking, then they're going to stop. <laughs> oh, it's like a kid's game almost. But no, without it's the exactly a kid's game. I'm very childish. Uh, <laughs> ask any of my exes. I'm very immature. So uh, I think that would be a fun one. Then I also want to do the Pepsi challenge oh of cock God. sucking. <laughs> that would be amazing and yeah. you would have to find the local talent because yeah. i would well, imagine I'm for all of those it. things it'll be tough to it, talk while it's happening <laughs> right well there's the um i don't know who i'd be talking to but like yeah i think that'd be fun just to talk but then the pepsi challenge would be that one i've been trying to put together it's just hard to find the single women for it but it would just i'd take a couple who thinks they know each other very well and then uh, I would blindfold the guy and then the significant other and then like two to three other women 
would each take turns giving like two minutes of a blowjob. And then he's got to figure out which one was his significant other. <laughs> it's kind uh, of like that armpit challenge they did with ew, trying to, what? with this. Have you heard? So there's actually some research. It's not even a challenge. They did research around this. They had people smell their significant other, well, a line of people's significant other's armpits to determine if they could tell who was who. Ew, no, thank you. <laughs> Far less sexy. Like, let's not do that. <laughs> See? And I'm showing my nerd card, giant nerd card right here. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure all of the links are in the show notes so everyone knows how to find you. Okay. And I want to make sure that everybody, that they know about V-Card as well. Can you talk about that a little bit? The film? Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, the, the V-Card is a, uh, it's a documentary A buddy of mine made a while back, he was a 24-year-old virgin, so he made a documentary just about virginity and sexuality in America. It was interesting. I'm in it for legitimately 20 seconds. Um, (laughs) You know, I just wasn't very funny the day we recorded. It's okay. But yeah, it's uh, by a buddy of mine, Dylan Birdsall. It's called V Card Film. He's touring it, trying to put it in festivals. So go to their website, and I'm sure you'll see where you might be able to see it next. I like trying to give everybody all the things as far as resources, because if we can give them good resources, the more you know, the better we can do, right? Sure, sure. I sound like Schoolhouse Rock. (laughs) 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 So I will make sure everybody can get in touch with you. Is there any other takeaways you want to give to the audience, Billy? No, just go check out the Man Whore podcast wherever you're listening to this podcast. And then I'm uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at the Billy Presida. That's P-R-O-C-I-D-A. Thanks, everybody, for listening to us today. We will see you next time. Thanks for listening, folks. Please rate and review on iTunes. It helps this podcast get found. If you leave a five-star review, let me know about it on any social media, and I'll shout you out on the podcast. You can find my website at ericamiley.com. You can find me on Facebook, the Gram, and Twitter. See you all next time.